Today we're wrecking historic players on Magic Arena with just a 15 rare budget, thanks to the power of Primeval Titan and Maze's End. So here is our Primeval Titan gate deck, and the important thing to know about this deck, 15 total rares and mythics on Magic Arena, so super cheap to put together, and I think the deck's actually really good, not just like budget deck good, but rank up to mythic good good, and it's super fun, so if you're looking for a super cheap competitive deck, this would definitely be one I'd recommend. Anyway, let's talk about the deck real quick, jump into the game, see it in action. So our deck is pretty singularly focused on winning with Maze's End. To win with Maze's End, we need 10 differently named gates after we activate it. So technically it's 9 different gates on the battlefield and the Maze's End, then we activate it, we get the last gate, we win the game on the spot. So for this to work. We need a bunch of gates, and honestly, the gates aren't all that interesting. They're just here to support our mazes end and our synergies. The one exception is Baldur's Gate, which is like Cabal Coffers for gates, and it makes a ridiculous amount of mana. Of course, for this plan to work, we gotta get lands on the battlefield really quickly. Just making our land drop for 10 or 11 turns, that's not a realistic way to win. So our deck is full of ramp. Explore, Grow Spiral, Circudia's Root, Escape to the Wilds, all these cards put at least one extra land into play. Some of them put two extra lands into play, and most of them also draw six extra cards to keep us churning through our deck, but the big payoff is Primeval Titan, and I don't even know if it's possible to overstate just how strong this card is in our deck. Primeval Titan gets two lands when it ETBs, two more lands when it attacks, and remember, we talked about earlier, to win the game with Maze's End, we need ten lands on the battlefield. Maze's End, nine gates, activate Maze's End, it gets gate number ten, we win the game, and the math on Primeval Titan lines up perfectly with this plan. If we're casting Primeval Evil Titan, we already have six lands. So it comes down, it gets land seven and eight. The next turn it attacks, gets land nine and 10, which is exactly enough that we can activate our mazes and win on the spot. Essentially, Primeval Titan usually means we win the game the next turn because we're gonna have enough lands to get our mazes in. The card is absolutely ridiculous. It speeds up our deck by like three turns. It is oh, so absurd. Otherwise, the reason to play Gates is they get some really good payoffs. Gatebreaker Ram, really massive, a nice backup plan with Prime time if we can't win with our mazes and gates of blaze really strong sweeper guild summit actually just outdraws the one ring most of the time it's an absurd source of card advantage as far as the sideboard a bunch of removal is sweeper some vetoes for the control matchup and that is primeval titan gates 15 rare and mythic primeval titan gates for historic that's our budget magic deck for today so let's jump into some games and see the power of prime time in the gate deck in 2023 on magic arena thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish budget magic time we are playing some Ooh, sound looks pretty good primeval titan gates in his historic I love the gate deck uh one of my one of my all-time favorite ba budget decks for basically every format Hmm. All right, opponent, Swamp, Inquisition. This hand did look really good. Grow Spiral into the Escape, into the Primeval Time. Ooh, Guild Summit. Guild Summit, that's, uh, that's R1 ring. Except R1 ring is uncommon and it costs 20 cents or something. <laughs> Guild Gate, go. Opponent appears to be Golgari. Perhaps John. <sighs> Chill with the discard opponent. They probably got to take Guild Summit, right? Or maybe people don't understand how busted Guild Summit is. Guild Summit, like, I guess if you're playing Bowmasters and Shieldred, which our opponent probably is, then you can... Well, it takes a growth spiral. Well, in that case, let's play the most busted of gates and Guild Summit. All right, we're going to show our opponent <laughs> that Guild Summit is actually just... It's actually just the one ring, except probably better. <laughs> In this archetype, in this, I, I'm not saying overall it's a better card. One ring's absolutely busted, but in gates, we could play one ring if we wanted to, but Guild Summit is just better in our deck. Liliana. Well, that is going to be a problem. Wow, do we have to discard from Evil Titan? I think we do. Oh, that hurts. So we get to draw a bunch of cards. We need to draw into a Soul Sphere because, uh, our deck doesn't have that many creatures for pressuring a Liliana. There is definitely a risk to Liliana Ultimates and. I don't know if I've ever beaten a Liliana ultimate, honestly. All right, there's the one ring. That's fine, we got our one ring. <laughs> That's fair, you can you can one ring, we can one ring. I mean, next turn we get to untap land, escape, guild gate. So we're gonna draw like seven cards next turn or something between escape and, uh, and our guild gates and our guild summit. We need to hit a way to uh, deal with this Liliana though. That's the problem, that is the problem.
I guess Plaza is just better, right? Play the Plaza Harmony, gain a bit of life. And less escape. See what we can find. Hopefully a Soul Spear. Ugh. Well, I mean, we found a ton of ramp, which is good. But we have found no way to pressure this Liliana. Okay, we might actually just be getting Liliana. Wow, they didn't activate the One Ring. Our opponent's worried about the damage. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Who plays the One Ring and does not activate it the first time? I don't think I've... I've seen a lot of One Rings cast, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone. Unless you're at, like, one life or something. But if you're 16, I've never seen anyone just skip the first draw. Yeah, we can pitch the Mountain. Pelonet pitches Eliminate. One thing that our deck's pretty good at is minimizing the impact of targeted removal. Well... This is awkward, but we have all this ramp. I mean, I guess the ramp also draws us cards, right? We can also make some Baldur's Gate mana. This is where tapping becomes a challenge. We gotta leave red mana up. We need a bunch of green mana. We might need blue mana. Uh, all right, let's grab a couple gates. So because of Guild Summit, these are also drawing us cards. Yeah, I guess we just take these seat gates, probably. Draw a couple. One of the nice things about gates on Arena now is there's like 17 gates or 18 gates. It used to be there were like exactly 10 or 11, and you had to be really careful about which ones you get. Now you just like play a bunch of one-ups and you just grab random gates and you're gonna get to 10 eventually. Uh, explore, all right, there's a Primeval Titan. Draw a card. Where are, we only have two souls, uh, soul Seers in our deck. Well, grow spiral. Only two, so I guess not finding them, even though we're drawing a ton of cards, is not a surprise. <sighs> Gatebreaker Ram could have helped. I think it's it's too late now, though. Well, we'll see. I mean, we get to draw a ton of cards again the next turn. So opponent takes up Liliana. Whatever. I mean, we get to draw a ridiculous number of cards, but do we find a way to answer this Liliana is the question. Because if Liliana ultimates, can we win? Can we win through a Liliana ultimate? All right, opponent draws with the One Ring, of course. Gonna take up the Liliana. I guess we discard the Plaza. Not technically a gate. Oh, opponent, Phyrexian Arena, sure, 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 more card draw. Uh, come on, escape. Oh, uh, we need to find, we need to find that Soul Sphere this turn. We don't even care about killing Liliana, we just gotta keep it from ultimating. Uh, we can draw a ridiculous number of cards. Do we play another Guild Summit? Normally, Guild Summit's weird. Normally, one is fine. Two is like the maximum that we ever want or else we might mill out. Um, let's make 10. Yeah, Baldur's Gate's kind of ridiculous. Let's make 10, 10 mana, play the Primeval Titan. I think we're gonna just not play the Guild Summit. I think we Primeval Titan, get a Maze of Zen, get a Gate. Maybe this Primeval Titan will induce our opponent to down ticking Liliana. Uh, escape to the wilds. Can we hit a oh, wrong one? We hit a Gates Ablaze. That doesn't deal with Liliana though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I guess we can cast another escape. Although, is that even worth it? Maybe we should just, hmm. This is interesting. Yeah, I think we just have to escape again. We have an untapped land. So we get five more shots at hitting a soul. <sighs> Okay, I guess this Liliana ultimate's about to happen and there is nothing we can do about it. I guess the good news is, yeah, we should play the Exiled Explorer. I guess the good news is, wow, boy, both Soul Seers in the bottom, like 15, 14 cards, 13 cards. Um, the good news is we do have a lot of permanents on the battlefield. Wow, we just could not find it. Uh, well, I think at this point it's a little unlucky. Even with two, we got, we got almost drew our entire deck and we could not find one. Well, is there any way we survive a Liliana ultimate? We do have a lot of permanence on the battlefield. So the quite, we're still gonna be able to function. Even if our opponent manages to split our permanence perfectly optimally, we still should be able to function. The question's gonna be, do we still have 10 differently named gates to win the game? If our opponent splits the gates well, they should be able to make it so mazes end can't work. And then I don't know if we're gonna be able to win with Primeval Titans and Gatebreak Rams. So we gotta sack, they get to split our permanents into two piles. We gotta sack half of them. I think you gotta split Baldur's Gate and Maze's End, right? That's the that's the obvious. And then I think you just want to split the differently named gates to try to get rid of as many differently named gates as possible. If they do it right, I think we should be able to, they should be able to keep us from Maze's End winning. And we only got like 
12 cards in our deck. And the skill summit's not a May. So there's actually a chance that we just, with the amount our opponent's drawn, they might be able to just kill all of our creatures and make us mill out eventually. All right, opponent. Wow. Okay, so they really value getting rid of Guild Summit and Primeval Titan. Definitely keep the pile that has like 20 mana in most of our gates. We got another May one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No shade, but I think our opponent split that in. Well, there it is too. We could have avoided all this if you were one card higher in our library. I mean, I think this is fine though. We still have so many gates that I think we just mazes end win, right? So we can play a guild gate. We can explore. We got to put the mazes end into play. We only have two. So we have to make sure we get that on the battlefield. So play the mazes end. Play primeval titan. Wow, so our opponent really valued getting rid of our Primeval Titan in our Guild Summit. They did not really value keeping us off the Maze's End kill. I think, so I could see an argument for that. If there wasn't a Maze's End in our Exile Zone, <laughs> showing itself to our opponent, because if well, you couldn't see it there, maybe you can make the argument, wow, these Gatebreak Rams are big. You could make the argument that, well, maybe they're playing one of them. Yeah, our well, that went way better than I ever could have imagined. Uh, when we saw that Liliana taking up to ultimate, I thought it was going to absolutely ruin our day, but somehow our opponent ultimated a Liliana and we won with Mazes End the next turn, essentially. Well, I guess it'd be two turns for a ton tap, but still. Uh, all right, we'll bring in Terra Sunders, maybe some Vetoes. Terra Sunders is really nice against uh against the one ring they can easily snipe the one ring plus we can always kick in and get rid of a liliana or something so it's also more liliana answers well that went way better than it should have when that liliana ultimated i don't uh, yeah i think our opponent's piles were probably just wrong honestly i was gonna say i don't know if our opponent's piles are wrong but yeah i think considering that you could see the mazes end in the exile zone i think you need to focus on keeping us off the mazes end kill not getting rid of primeval especially if you got worm coil in hand like you got worm coil you're a black deck you probably got a ton of removal what, do, what does our Primeval Titan actually matter at that point? Gilgate, go. This hand's slow, but that's fine, because our opponent's deck's not especially fast. Ooh, all right. Well, Grow Spiral makes it much faster. We're drawing all of our untapped lands. Do we play Maze's End? We get to Grow Spiral and extra land into play anyway. Yeah, let's play Maze's End and pass. We can Grow Spiral. I don't know what we put into play, honestly. Oh god, children. All right, so we need an answer to that. Yeah, let's put the tap land into play. Baldur's Gate's actually like a huge deal for this deck. Cabal Coffers for Gates is actually very strong. All right, well, I mean, I guess we're just taking shieldred damage for a bit. Definitely need some red gates here. Let's just get two differently named red gates. So one, two, three, four, five. So next turn, Baldur's Gate makes three extra mana? All right, opponent, gonna drain us with Shieldred. One, two, three. So I think we have enough mana that next turn we can escape and try to hit a soul spear again. Boy, the, the quest for, a, oh God, Obliterator 2, that is a clock. Oh, Gates of Blaze would have been such a nice answer if we didn't have that Obliterator out. Okay, so we're gonna have to get a little lucky here, I think. So now we need, wow, we need an answer to the Obliterator, so then we can Gates Ablaze the Shieldred, and we gotta do this very soon, because if we do nothing, we're going to one next turn because of Shieldred. Well, let's make some Baldur's Gate mana. Yeah, let's make red, because we do want to leave up the possibility of drawing a Soul Seer to get rid of Shieldred, and we want to leave up... Oh, all right, that, that actually works. That's fine. So we get to Soul Seer Shieldred, we also don't have enough mana for Circudius Rue. I guess, <sighs> do we just play the tap gate? Probably. Let's play the gate past the turn. So this is fine. We can take the Obliterator hit. Then we can tear us under the Obliterator. If our opponent plays more creatures, we can Gates Ablaze. Otherwise, next turn is going to be a big turn. We have a lot of mana. We have a lot of mana. Opponent hits us down to seven. The one ring, sure. The one ring's a little scary here because we don't have our one ring. Opponent passes when another escape to the wilds. Hmm, um, how close are we to actually winning with Mazes End? One, two, three, four, five, six? We do have two Mazes Ends. Wait, can we just win this turn? Is it possible we win? I don't think we can win yet. I think we need w one more turn. Let's get rid of the Obliterator. 
Put an end to that problem. Yeah, I think we just set up to win next turn. Uh, Plaza. Yeah, we might as well escape. We can still play the Circudius route. Uh, play the Guild Gate. So that's gate, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so this should do it. So we get two other gates. And I think this just means we win next turn, right? With double mazes end. Oh yeah, we definitely, our opponent, well, I guess kill us from 10 if you can, or blow up our mazes ends or something. Uh, but I'm gonna draw with the one ring. Sure. I can't believe we beat that Liliana ultimate still. <laughs> that oh, worm coil, yeah, I mean, a good card, but that does not interact with the mazes end kill. Mazes end? Pick it up, pick it up, grab a random gate, and GG! Budget magic time! We are trying to uh, gate it up in Historic this week. Now that Primeval Titan's around to uh, speed up the gate clock, the Mesa's End win. Ooh, gruel, eh? The awkward part of this hand is we don't have any green mana. We really could use some green mana. I mean, I guess... Well, alright. Gates of Blaze could be good if our opponent's a Gruel deck. I guess Maze's End can eventually get us green mana. Opponent plays another mountain, passes the turn. Well, there's our green mana. It's slow, but uh, we are playing Gates, so all of our mana is slow. <laughs> That's kind of the gimmick of Gates. Oh, Karn, oh no. Well, at least we got the Soul Seer this time. Is our opponent playing... Oh my god, liquid metal coating. Oh, the land combo deck versus land destruction. The classic, the classic magic arena matchup. We gotta kill this Karn, that's for sure. We really don't want to start losing our lands yet. Gatebreaker Ram's a little bit hit or miss, but I feel like this is gonna be the matchup where Gatebreaker Ram might actually might actually really shine. Yeah, we gotta play two untapped lands, gain a bit of life. I think we just wait until our opponent so our opponent's incentivized to cast the liquid metal coating before they activate karn once they cast liquid metal coating we'll kill the karn and then liquid metal coating doesn't do much until they find another karn oh about it liquid metal coating all right souls here the karn yeah losing a land every turn would make it difficult to win with maze's end what do you got about it what do you got about it bass Ooh, killed summit that's a good one that is a good one Boy, I think we play it. Maybe we, uh, the other thing is Gatebreaker Ram is really good at pressuring Planeswalkers. I think our plan is play Guild Summit, but then just play the untapped land, play Gatebreaker, and then we'll set up for next turn with both of our three drops. All right, Liquid Metal holding the Guild Summit. Besage you. That might change things. Yeah, all right, forget the Gatebreaker Ram. Let's just get a gate. Well, okay, so since this is all the value we're gonna get out of Guild Summit, I think we just tap all of our lands and tap all of our lands and get a couple of cards. Please don't play another card in this turn. That's the that's the nightmare. That's why we kind of want the... Oh, all right. Well, that's the worst case scenario. Now I get to start eating our gates. Yeah, gonna well, gonna eat the mazes, and that also makes a lot of sense. All right, so well, mazes end down. Well, now we lose a land every turn until we kill the Karn. We definitely have to play Gatebreaker Ram. Like no, no doubt about it. That's our our best chance to be able to get this Karn off the battlefield at the moment. Uh, Guild Summit. Drawing another Guild Summit's actually pretty pretty nice. Although we don't have any gates at the moment somehow. All right, opponent, what land are we killing this time? So I think you just snipe gates. Honestly, like, you're probably not gonna cut us off colors very easily. I would just <laughs> try to pick gates that you think we're only playing one of to try to minimize the odds of nine to mazes in. Wow, interesting. Opponent has chosen a non-gate land. I don't know if I think that's... <laughs> We've seen some interesting choices from opponents uh, today. The Liliana, ooh, Minskin boot, god. All right, that's a lot of scary planeswalkers. All right, Karn to blow up a land every turn, Minskin boo. Well, now this is interesting. Simic guild gate. So we can gates a blaze away the hamster and kill the Karn. We can also just kill the Minskin Boo and let Karn do its thing one more turn and try to get rid of that next turn. I'm fairly confident that a Gruul deck is not gonna, ooh, all right, well, 
Uh, this is probably wrong, but now that we draw escape, how do we pass up a draw five? Probably the correct thing to do is just like gates ablaze the hamster, kill the Karn, stop losing lands. But I mean, we get to kill the Mins Gimbu, right? The problem with killing the hamster is it just comes back next turn if we don't kill Mins Gimbu. Like, it's just gonna come back. So we'd be killing it just to be able to attack down Karn. Probably, you know, I don't know if this is better or not, but I want to draw a card. So <laughs> let's attack the Mins Gimbu. I mean, I guess just making enough extra land drops is a way to play around Karn killing a land. Like, if Karn kills a land every turn, but we play two or three lands every turn, we still come out ahead, right? What do you got about it? What do you got? So now we can kill the hamster and actually get value out of it since the Minskin Boo is not just going to recreate it. Opponent really doesn't like these positive harmonies. Honestly, I think these are our worst lands. <laughs> Especially once they're on the battlefield. Their main power is they come into play on tapping gain as three life. But once they're on the battlefield, all right, there's a one ring. Sure, that's fine. We got the guild summit. Honestly, like really, truly, I, I know it sounds like a meme, but I actually think guild summit is just better than the one ring in this deck. Like see the cards that they draw, watch the cards that we draw with the guild summit. The opponent can shut down one of our lands. Well, now I think we just primeval titan. We definitely have to kill this Karn because it is annoying us. Somehow our opponents blow up a lot of lands, but I don't think they've blown up any gates. They blew up mazes and two plazas. Well, get rid of the hamster. Thankfully our opponents tapped out so they can't just kill this gate break ram. Get rid of the Karn, free our mana. Uh, explore, plaza, land, escape. So something to keep in mind against land destruction, land destruction is sorcery speed. There's no instant speed land destruction, I don't think, in the, in the format. So the way to beat land destruction with Maze's End is make sure to put the Maze's End into play with Gross Spiral at instant speed. So if you're worried about your opponent blowing up a land, like save one of your Maze's Ends to Gross Spiral in, and that, uh, that pretty much solves the land destruction issue. Opponent, Chandra, takes it up, sees in Pyro, but can't cast it. Yeah, Escape Breaker Ram is, wow. The Planeswalker Assassin and our opponent scoops it up. Well, all right, Vito's seem good. Like our main concern is not letting Karn blow up all of our lands. Terra Sunder also seems good. So normally, a lot of times sideboarding, I cut Gatebreaker Rams in matchups where it's gonna die. This is like the dream Gatebreaker Ram matchup though, to the point where maybe we could trim one. I don't even know if I wanna trim one. Like, Gruul Dex just cannot kill it. Like, we make it too big too quick. And then as you saw there, it just snipes all of their Planeswalkers or just kills them. Like, honestly, we probably, <laughs> We were too focused on the Planeswalkers. We probably could have just ignored our opponent's Planeswalkers and attacked their face in one with... Ugh. Sand really wants green mana. We can get it with Maze's End eventually. We do have the Guild Summit, though, which is one of our most important cards. Lana War Elves. Well, all right. Tap land. Go. How's about some green mana? Our one forest would be the best. Abundant Harvest. Gets a land. Sure. Remember when people were like super hyped about that card? Everyone thought Abundant Harvest would be really good and no one really plays it. Abundant Harvest number two. Sure, gets another land. Green mana for next turn. Land. Oh, come on, no Karn. Yeah, one of the downsides of uh, Gates is your lands do come into play tapped a lot. <laughs> like if we were buying another mana base, we'd probably be able to veto that Karn. I mean, I guess we can, ugh, this is so slow, but I guess we just have to play Maze's End and veto the coding. The good news is usually Karn decks only play one coding. So our opponent shouldn't be able to just tutor up another one. All right, yeah, we're gonna, this would actually just lock us. This would be fast enough. If they get to start blowing up a land here, I think it would be fast enough that they would just lock us out of this game. Opponent grabs another land, sure. Gets in with the land of war. Well, now we gotta decide. We need lands. These explorers get a lot better if we can start drawing cards. I think we just, yeah, take another, take another turn off, play a guild summit, tap our, tap our gate, draw a card. Lands would be really good. Sir Goodius is actually pretty good too, now that Guild Summit's down. Assuming Guild Summit lives. All right, Abuna, what do you got? What big scary gruel thing do you have this time? All right, the One Ring, that's fine. 
Sure. I've never played a deck where I've been less scared of the one ring than this deck. Like we don't care about the protection. We draw more cards than it. Somehow this 15 rare budget deck just like totally ignores the best card in the format. Oh, and it gets in, it says down to 18. Well, there's a land, that's good. Yeah, play the Guildgate draw card. Gate break a ram. Yeah, let's keep on ramping. Uh, definitely grabbing Baldur's Gate. I often grab these seat gates just because I know we're only playing one of them, so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> it's like the easy mode. Oh, oh double gate breaker ram. This might be a this might be a beatdown hand. Like if we just play two gate breaker rams. <sighs> yeah, let's let's discard explore. This might actually be a hand where we just like dump a bunch of gate breaker rams and try to win by attacking opponent untapping with the one ring now let's see what our opponent has how much mana does baldur's gate make one two three not that much yet four well i guess we have another gate yeah so it's plus two mana chandra chandra ultimating would be a problem well, I'm glad they don't also get a Minsk and Boo. I mean, we should be okay, right? Like, Gruul's issue is they're gonna struggle dealing with these Gatebreaker Rams. Opponent turns the one ring beatdowns. All right, you know, it is a 4-4 indestructible. <laughs> the the plan F of, of the one ring, turn it into a creature and try to beat your opponent down. <laughs> <laughs> Little used mode on uh, the best card in Magic. Bone it. Undap land. Um, well, let's play a tap land draw card. I mean, I think at this point we try to play some creatures, I th think. A lot of gate math. So we can... Okay, so I think we insert Curtius Root. Get a couple gates to up our gate count for Baldur's Gate. Yeah, we'll just take these ones since we know we only play one of them. Draw a couple cards. Make a bunch of green mana. And yeah, I guess we can explore first since we do an untap land. Explore. Ooh, Vito. That could be helpful in the future. Plaza gain a bit of life. One Primeval Titan or two Great Break Ramps is the question. I think it's one Primeval Titan because that gives us enough gates to just win with mazes end next turn. I mean, we're at 14. So I don't think we're dying this turn. Even if our opponent can kill the Primeval Titan and attack with it, not sure attacking for four with the One Ring is better than, uh, is better than just uh, drawing cards. We can actually, we have enough gates, we can actually get a Plaza and gain some life and get a gate. All right, opponent, so, I mean, I guess the TLDR is you have to stop our mazes and kill somehow this turn or kill us. Although, I don't know how they're gonna kill us through this. <laughs> it's 17, like we're not especially close to dead, even with two planeswalkers. All right, opponent, land. What do you have? Oh, I gonna draw with the one ring? Uh-huh. I wonder if they're playing actual land destruction. Like we've seen the Karn land destruction. Are they playing like Stone Rain? It would prevent us from winning next turn. All right, they're gonna tutor from outside the game. Oh, can they get Pithy Needle? Pithy Needle would also, if they get Pithy Needle for Mazes and the game continues. We do have answers for it. Oh, they get <laughs> Platinum Angel. Okay, that also, that also works. So opponent gets Platinum Angel. So now we can't win the game until we deal with the Platinum Angel. So I guess new plan is draw cards to find removal for Platinum Angel. Opponent gonna take up the Chandra, hit us to 15. I mean, we get to draw a ton of cards though. We get to draw a ton of, so we need any way to kill this Platinum Angel and then we can maze his end win. All right, gate, Permeable Titan, attack the Chandra. Get a couple of gates, draw a couple of cards. So as soon as we find removal, Maze's end is is super lethal. Grow spiral in forest. Oh god. I'm getting flashbacks to to that Liliana game where we just could not find the souls here and they Liliana ultimate it. Although we won, so maybe that's a good flashback. Well, let's make a bunch of mana and draw as many cards as possible. Grow spiral. Put a gate into play. Yeah, Guild Summit's a ridiculous card. Growth spiral? The only question is how do we tap? There we go, grow spiral. Ah, soul seer, okay. So that should do it, right? Guild summit draw a guard, another maze's end. Um, make some mana, make a ton of mana. Yeah, Baldur's Gate, tapping for 13. That is a good Baldur's Gate. So make a bunch of green, explore. I mean, we might as well have a little fun before we kill the Platinum Angel, right? Oh boy, hitting all the answers. <laughs> 
<laughs> Make it look like we're desperate, trying to dig, trying to dig desperately for the answer. <laughs> All right, tear is under. Get rid of the platinum angel. And let's activate Maze's End. GG! <laughs> well, apparently Maze's End beats land destruction. Budget magic time. We are slowly climbing towards Mythic with uh, 15 rare Primeval Titan Gates. Uh, oh, opponent. Mulling to four. All right, what are we playing? Tron? Playing Tron and Historic Opponent? Uh, Guild Gate Go. About it. Ah, uh, control. All right. Well, now I don't feel bad. If you're trying to blue white control us, eh, I'll accept you, Mulling to four. <laughs> if you're playing another deck, I might feel a little bad. Opponent foretells. Well, that might have been a fatal mistake. Because now we get a Guild Summit, and, uh,. Having a guild summit probably means we win. Like, especially with our opponent on the mulligan, like, the card advantage of guild summit that is uncounterable is going to be a big issue. Well, guild summit draw a card. And I guess it's Gatebreaker Ram's time to shine. Or get countered. All right, yep. Opponent absorbs it. Sure. I mean, we're so far hit on cards. I think we just, like, cast things into the counters and eventually they're going to run out of cards especially with this guild summit but like they're going to run out of cards before we run out of cards so sooner or later they're going to run out of counters and our things will resolve and then our opponent will lose dovin's veto sure continuing to draw gates is good Ooh, another guild summit hmm i think we actually are going to play another guild summit we don't even really care if it gets countered usually you only need one guild summit but it's pretty good counter bait and if it resolves then well we get to draw even more cards uh all right we hit a land at least play the plaza <laughs> sand looks pretty good behold the multiverse opponent trying to refuel a little bit one to the top so what how does this go wrong does teferi beat us Cycles the sensor. Like, if they go land to fairy, does it matter? I don't even think it really matters, does it? Because we have two guild summits. Like, our guild summits outdraw to fairy. And we could Primeval Titan. I expect whatever we do is going to get countered. Let's Circudius Root so we can play two spells this turn. Okay. Well, that makes things even worse for our opponent because now we get Baldur's Gate. And now our mana is getting infinite <laughs> draw four cards yeah when your when your explosive vegetation is also a draw for you know your deck is uh doing its thing if we hit another untap land we could explore again yeah let's play the plaza actually maybe it's just better to pass we're drawing so many cards actually gate break maybe we gate break it's just gonna die but sure the problem with just like going off with explorers is we're just gonna draw a ton of cards and have to discard the hand size so we want to minimize how much we're discarding in march of otherworldly like fine like at this point i other than accidentally milling ourselves out with these guild summits i don't know how we actually lose this game <laughs> It seems very difficult for us to to find a way to lose. About it, cycles another sensor. Uh, play the Gilgate. Draw two cards. Escape. Um. Well, let's um, play an explore. Yeah, we're not playing that guild summit. Uh, Simic Guild Gate. So explorers draw three cards, make an extra land drop. And then we will, we do need a Maze's End at some point. That's the, that's the main thing we haven't found yet. Well, let's Baldur's Gate. Make a bunch of green. Escape. Maze's End. Where's our Maze's End? All right. Uh, no Maze's End. I guess we explore. One thing to note about Explore versus go, Grow Spiral. Explore says you can play an extra land, so it lets us play the lands from Exile with Escape. Grow Spiral says put a land into play from your hand. So Grow Spiral does not let us play the Escape lands. Let's gate break. I mean, maybe we still win by beating down this. Gatebreaker Ram is going to be massive if it resolves. It does. Well, we will. We can grow spiral at instant speed and put a and put another gate into play. We just need Maze's End. We're like very set up for the Maze's End kill if we can find Maze's End. Yeah, discard Guild Summit. <laughs> Already a little nervous about having two Guild Summits. This is you're seeing the the risk that they're if you get too many Guild Summits going. We make a lot of land drops and draw a lot of cards. Another Gates of Blaze. Well, go Gary, go Gate. Draw two cards. More. So many guild summits. All right. So many guild summits. 
Souls here. Well, I guess we got the Teferi covered. I mean, if we can resolve a Primeval Titan, that does that does find Maze's End. We do have multiple Primeval Titans we can play this turn. We can also escape from uh, Exile. I don't know if it matters. Let's Primeval Titan first. Like, if we resolve one of these, we just win. All right, opponent has Absorb. Well, okay. Do we have more Primeval Titans than you have counters, opponent? Primeval Titan number two. Yeah, Baldur's Gate's absurd. We have so much mana, we can double Primeval Titan and still escape to the wilds. Uh, well, let's get our Mazes Ends. Mazes End, Mazes End, escape to the wilds. 19 cards in our deck, down to 14. Yeah, just in time. And op opponent scoops it up, and uh, I'm starting to think Gates is kind of busted. I'm starting to think this deck is just actually really good. Primeval Titan is like such a ridiculously huge upgrade compared to uh, past versions of Budget Gates. Like it's uh, a jaw-droppingly powerful card in this deck. I am wondering though, like, do we want Gatebreak Rams in the main deck? I'm almost wondering if Terra Sunder in the main, Gatebreak Ram in the sideboard would make the deck better. Ah, it's so hit or miss. We got to see it go off against the Gruul deck. Like in that matchup, it's great, but there's so many Rakdos decks, control decks. Against those, Gatebreak Ram just dies. I'd rather just have a removal spell. So I'm almost wondering if it's worth switching. Switching, putting Gatebreak in the sideboard and putting uh, the removal in the main. Well, let's say it only has two lands, which is a little sketch. Our deck does have a million lands, so odds of us finding lands are pretty good. Dobin's Veto is a good draw against control. Opponent. Well, yeah, I think we gotta play the white mana. This lets us leave up Veto next turn. I don't know what we're vetoing on turn four, but might need to veto something. Opponent, tap land. Well, all right, we're hitting our land, so that's good. Play another gate, pass the turn. I think we're mostly scared of Teferi, so having a veto on five seems big. Uh, opponent again, Ju. Well, mazes and go. We did take out our creature sweepers. I guess there's some chance they just untap counter our stuff, snowball the wandering up Yeah, let's veto it. Wow, and a bonus scoops it up. All right, well, I guess vetoing was the right choice. <laughs> Sweet, and we are ranking up. I think we got a mulligan this. This hand's really powerful, but not for a while. All right, this will keep. This hand is sort of powerful i think we're gonna put gatebreaker to the bottom gatebreaker is very matchup dependent if our opponent can't kill it it's amazing but against decks that have black mana and so forth much worse inquisition well losing guild summit is a bummer land please well all right mazes end counts a little early for the mazes end but we'll we'll take it opponent going to thought seize all right, we really need a land. Oh God, that's excellent. Okay, uh, well, we will start tutoring out gates, I guess. Abundant, Fable the Mirror Breaker. All right, well, Mazes End. Uh, let's get, so we have red, red, green. Let's get to Mirror Guild Gate, I think. Well, if we draw an untap land, we get to escape to the wilds, which would be sweet. We draw a tap land. Well, in that case, let's explore, draw a card. Land, land, pass the turn. Well, hopefully our opponent's out of discard. This escape to the wilds would be incredibly helpful. Opponent pitches the one ring and a Shieldred's Edict. Do they find a Thought Seize? That's the real question, opponent. Got again with the goblin, right? There's no reason not to. Gets in, makes a treasure. Sure, down to 18. Uh, That's actually kind of fine. I mean, it's annoying and it's gonna draw our opponent a ton of cards. However, assuming we get to resolve this escape to the wilds, we're kind of good. Well, let's grow spiral into a grow spiral. Untap. Escape. Oh god, only one land? That's actually kind of brutal. All right, well, play the tap land past the turn. Yeah, that was worse than we were hoping for, honestly. So I guess we could be in trouble now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, only hitting one land there is actually really bad for us. Pony hits us down to 16. Yeah, that could end up actually being a problem. Pony draws a bunch of cards. I mean, we can sweep, but we really need to get down Primeval Titan. Passes. Well, okay. No sweeping, just Primeval Titaning. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna die, but we can't really do anything about that. Baldur's Gate and, yeah, whatever. And play this gate and pass the turn. All right, so we need a we need another card draw spell, basically. Opponent. 
Yeah, it's rid of the Primeval Titan. Yeah, we lose a lot of stuff here, unfortunately. Get pinged. Yeah, losing that Gates of Blaze really hurts. We had we had plans for that. So we need another Gates of Blaze. We have a lot of mana now, thanks to Baldur's Gate. But our hand is, wow, even more empty. Three, four, five, six. We're still still pretty far away from actually winning with Maze's End. Opponent gets in, hits us. Opponent's drawn a lot of discard this game, which has worked in their favor. I think this is actually a really good matchup for us overall, but opponent had the, the right cards. We were on the mulligan and they had triple discard. We need to hit a sweeper. Escape to the Wilds is good. Opponent. Yep, yep, yep. All right, deck. That's a random guild gate. All right, let's play the guild gate. Make blue mana. Actually, no, we tapped all of our red mana. That's not wise. Let's see. Let's do it this way. All right, make blue mana. Seek. Uh, Circudius root. All right, grow spiral. So this has to be gates of blaze or we're dead. Gate break a ram. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, triple discard. Triple discard. Well, we'll bring in the Terra Sunders. This is a very bad Gate Break Ram matchup, so go down Gate Break Ram. Gate Break Ram, if you decide to try this deck, which if you're looking for a competitive budget deck, you should, Gate Break Ram is the first card that comes out basically every every removal heavy match. So if your opponent's playing a black deck with removal, take out Gate Breaker Ram, because it's just gonna die. If your opponent's playing like red or green and not playing hard removal, then Gate Breaker Ram is like a legit plan to win the game, pressure planeswalkers. So a very, very matchup dependent to the point where I'm almost wondering if, I don't know, I'm almost wondering if it would be better as a sideboard card. Like start with it in the sideboard and then bring it in in the matchups where it's good, rather than then start with it in the main deck and bring it out in matchups where it's not good, which is almost every matchup. All right, well, this looks like one of our hands. Having a couple untapped lands isn't bad. We'll see how much discard our opponent has. Like if they, yeah. I mean, we're gonna need to draw into some card draw at some point. Opponent, discard spell number one. I mean, opponent has done a really good job of, of finding all their discard, that's for sure. Well, play a tap land past the turn. Opponent, do we have discard spell number two? And? Oh boy, opponent, proving their ability to draw discard. Summit guild gate, go. Well, we're gonna need an escape or a guild summit. We need we need some sort of card advantage here to get our engine going. Blood tithe, harvest us, sure. Well, primeval titan could be good eventually, although that might be a ways in the future. One of the upsides of this deck, especially after we take out the gate break rams, is we really don't have many removal targets, which tends to leave opponents with quite a few dead draws. Opponent, tap land. Ah, oh, the one ring. Okay. I mean, normally we beat the one ring. The problem is, I'm not sure if this hand beats the one ring. That's, uh, that's the concern. Because we just, we don't have any card draw. Normally, our deck just outdraws the one ring, <laughs> is the idea. But uh, we haven't any escapes, haven't hit a guild summit. So this hand is probably losing to the one ring. All right, a little bit of, little bit of alchemy for our opponent to take our, well, we'll see. All right, they take Primeval Titan. That does mean we get to sweep, which is something at least. Uh, one, two, three. Well, that's Gates Ablaze. Play the mazes end. So we can seek something end of turn. Really want that something to be card draw. Although our opponent could have bowmasters, which would make that worse. Opponent. Yeah, this one ring is just going off here. Like I said, normally we don't care, but in this case we kind of care because we don't have the card draw. Our normal plan is just go card for card with them, which Guild Summit does, and escape to the wilds. Like, we just draw as many cards, except we don't lose a bunch of life. Well, let's, uh, all right, make some green mana. Come on, Gate of the Manor Born. Give us something good for once. Growth Spiral, not that good. Well, there's an escape though. Um, all right, let's see. One, two. Make green mana. We want to leave red mana up. Make green mana. 
Escape. Escape is nice because it also gets around Bowmasters. It's not actual card draw, even though it reads like card draw. So play the Guild Gate. Play the Island. Grow Spiral. Put a Forest into play. Our gates are weird at the moment. We've drawn all three Simic Guild Gates. So even though we have a lot of lands on the battlefield... So even though we have a lot of lands on the battlefield, those lands uh, are not really helping us win with Maze's End. We only have five different gates. Ooh, opponent discards the Besaju. I would think this Baldur's Gate would be a worthwhile target, but opponent's going to go blank. Well, I think we grow Spiral. Oh, that's unfortunate. And I guess we grow Spiral. Oh, God. Hmm, okay. Well, we were hoping to draw lands. Instead, we drew two bombs and then had to discard them. This is lining up poorly in a whole bunch of different ways for us. Runs out of Bowmasters. Oh, opponent, no fear of dying to the One Ring. We still have this Gates Ablaze. Yeah, that was really unfortunate that our top two cards, like, our deck would have done so much better if we had just not uh, not cast those Gross Spirals. It would have worked out way... I think it's correct to cast them, because odds of hitting land are pretty high. We have 28 lands in the deck. But it ended up backfiring pretty brutally there. Well, we'll see. So we can Gates Ablaze. Just a Guild Gate. Well, Gates Ablaze. Play the Guild Gate and pass the turn. I guess we can... Well, I mean, our opponent needs a shield red, right? To gain a bunch of life here. They're, they are at some risk of getting one ringed. I never actually see this happen in practice, though. Like, one every, I don't know, 20 games, maybe someone dies to their one ring. It's so unlikely. Um, oh, it fires up down to the bugbear. Okay. Is our opponent going to die to the one ring? Is that actually a thing? Oh, they just have another one. All right, opponent draws a million cards yeah the false hope of the one ring all right there we go there we go all right well let's mazes end get one of the gates that can find a card pony gets pro everything draws another card even though they already have 20 cards in hand that's a odd choice but okay all right discards a bunch of lands we draw a flame blessed bolt well let's make some green mana make a blue mana seek up a non-land card all right is this primeval titan that's not bad the question is is there any chance that we live that's what i'm not sold all right let's let's do a gate count here three four five six seven so we can go eight nine we could win with a shield or trigger on the stack I think we, wow, opponent scoops it up. Oh my goodness. I think we, I think we had it. Like, so I think if we go gate, gate, even if our opponent has shielded and we take some damage, we should be able to win on our upkeep before the shielded trigger goes off. That was surprising. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say about this deck. It just doesn't really care that much about the one ring. Like the one rings, like, yes, it can go off and it can beat us, but we like ran pretty poorly. We never had a card advantage engine. Our opponent had the one ring going from turn four. They drew, I don't even know, their deck with it and it, in the end, didn't actually matter. The bigger issue is just getting torn apart by discard, honestly. Oh boy, all right. I mean, this has our Guild Summit, which is our best card. Is there any chance we get it down before it gets hit by discard? That's the question. Uh, it. Untap land and Blood Tithe Havista. Untap land would be the best. Oh, that's a, that is a draw. Okay. I think we grow Spiral right now while our opponent's tapped out. Um, put a Golgari Guild Gate into play. All right. All right, one more turn, no discard. One more, just one, just one, that's all we want. One more to get this guild summit down and die to your orcish bowmasters. We'd even kind of be okay with Crucius here, Jerusel. All right, guild summit. Is it guild gate draw a card? Yeah, let's see if they have the double thought sees. Wow, nothing, okay, gets and hits us. I mean, I guess we are kind of getting beaten down here. Could use a sweeper, that would be the best. Hey, like a Gates Ablaze, for example. Um, all right, let's play the land. Because if we draw an untap land, we can also explore. All right. Uh, well, we will just Gates Ablaze. 
Reset the board. All right, so we're at 11. That's not bad. We have another removal spell. We got the guild summit down without getting hit by disc. Wow, they discard two, sh a Lillian and a Shieldred, okay? Opponent tap land. Passes. Let's play the guild gate. If our opponent bowmasters, I think we just kill the bowmasters. Get pinged. Draw guild gate. Explore. Play the guild gate. Out of removal at the moment, but not dead yet. Little scared about bowmasters number two, Shieldred. That's also a little scary. All right, tear asunder. Well, we need to tear asunder Shieldred. Plaza to gain life. Circudius Root, Baldur's Gate, and I guess uh, Gateborn Manor. Draw a couple of cards. All right, Soul Seer is actually really good. That's some protection from another shield rid. Opponent hits us. What do we do with this Primeval Titan? Well, okay, maybe we never, don't get to find out. Opponent takes the Primeval Titan. Passes. The question is always how do we tap our mana? Two. Make blue mana. Play a guild summit. Opponent, dis wow, discards the one ring, okay. Obviously looking for a Bowmasters. If they find one, we can kill it, but it is sketchy. All right, resolves. Draw a card. Play a guild gate, draw two cards. Play escape to the wilds. One mind hitting another sweeper. All right, there's the Gates Ablaze. So let's Gates Ablaze. Sweep the board. Play the Mountain. So this lets us leave up the Souls here. It does cost us the ability to play it. Wow. Wait, they they had the Bowmasters and just decided not to cast it? Uh, Okay, sure. Wow, this is gonna be close, actually. All right, one ring, that's fine. Uh, Kill the Bowmasters. All right, this is this is okay. This is okay. This means our opponent can't play a Bowmaster, so we're good to draw cards. And drawing a lot of cards, hopefully, will find us a Primeval Titan to gain us a bunch of life. Guild Gate. Well, okay. So, question is, how many cards? We have another one of these in hand. All right, let's draw two. Oh, we can win in two turns. Can we live two turns? Grow Spiral. Uh, put a guild gate into play. Draw some cards. Let's make green mana. And a post scoops it up. Whoo! Okay. Opponent playing the best deck in the format. All the busted cards. Jerusalem's, Crucius's, Bowmasters, One Rings. Can't stand up to 15 rares worth of gates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this deck's so good. I mean, so would we have won the game here? Probably. We get to draw so many cards. Like between, so Grow Spiral draws three, Explorer draws three. If we ever get stuck, we can Guild Summit to draw even more. Actually, two Guild Summits. So in theory, we should draw enough cards that we'll hit a Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan can get two Plaza of Harmonies to put us up to 11. And then we can also put the Maze's End into play. So we win on our next upkeep. So I'm pretty sure like, yeah, we could whiff with all this card draw. It's like theoretically possible, but we only got 22 cards in our deck. So uh, in what, three Primeval Titans still? So our odds of actually winning here are super high. Yeah, sweet, sweet. It is 15 rare gate time. We are a win away from uh, hitting Mythic with our <laughs> with our budget deck. And oh, I mean, I think we keep this on the draw. We really want a green source. We really just want lands in general. <sighs> Hopefully our opponent's not control. If these gates of blazes are good, this hand should be good as long as we hit a land. Rakdos, always Rakdos. All right, deck. We're playing 28 lands, so. We should hit them, right? Well, okay, that that is a land. That's not exactly the land we were hoping for, but it is, it counts, it counts. Oh, uh, it. Now even an untapped land would be good. Crucius, pretty annoying. Untapped land would actually be the best because then we get down Guild Summit. Or we sweep away the Crucius, one or the other. All right, well, we're hitting our lands. We're hitting our lands. We're not making it look easy, but we're doing it. 
Hopefully this isn't shield red. That would be the worst here. Down to 17. Croxa. Well, I guess we'll discard a gross spiral that we can't cast anyway. Huh, so our opponent's Titan only costs two mana. Opponent gonna discard the Crucius. Do we have to sweep here? I really don't want to sweep here. But I also really don't know if we can just let Crucius keep going off. We don't even get to draw with the guild summit. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to, unfortunately. Kill the Crucius. Play the mazes and pass the turn. Well, there's the Billmasters. Yup. Opponent untaps. Yeah, two Cruciuses is a lot. That's a lot of activations. Oh my god, Invoke Despair. Okay, well, yeah, things are looking pretty grim on this one, honestly. To the point where I think we're just dead. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, and now we're definitely just dead. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing about Crucius, is the card can still snowball incredibly hard. And we whiff on lands. All right. Yeah, Crucius, like, it still has a lot of snowballing power. Uh, we're gonna go down these gate break rams, which are, uh, just gonna die anyway. Go down great break rams. Go up some more removal. Run it like that. Yeah, I, still, I, I don't know. We keep winning with the deck. So we can't complain much about it. So we keep winning. We're almost a mythic. Our record's absurd. Still not sold on gate break, though. Still think the deck, maybe it's better with those on the sideboard. I feel like we sideboarded out like 75% of the time. I almost wonder if the deck's better, like if it tries to just blank our opponent's targeted removal. Like, is our deck better if we just try to blank the targeted removal, don't play any creatures, and trust that, uh, and trust that we just win, like, a combo deck, essentially? I think part of it, too, is just the meta. Like, Rakdos is absurdly popular. Like, everyone's playing Rakdos. So the fact that Rakdos is so heavily played and Rakdos has a ton of removal that kills Gatebreak, that's probably part of it too. If the meta looked different, then I think Gatebreak would, would be worth it. But there's just so many removal heavy Rakdos decks at the moment. Boy, we are running awkwardly this matchup. Well, at least we got some gates. Still technically no green mana. How are we so bad at drawing green mana? I mean, I guess technically Baldur's Gate can eventually make green mana, but well, this is gonna be about, can we get down a guild summit? Yeah, I guess we just put growth spiral to the bottom for now. We don't have the green mana for it immediately anyway. Like turn what? Turn something way in the future. Turn three, we could get to it. But I think turn three, we hopefully wanna be playing guild summit. Like in our ideal world, Guildgate, Guildgate, Untap Guildgate, Guild Summit. That's what we would like to do. Or some, I don't know, maybe it's Plaza of Harmony on three and uh, Baldur's Gate on four. Something like that, though, is, is what we're hoping for. Well, let's see how much discard they have. If our opponent can thought seize our Guild Summit, this hand gets pretty jank. And thought seize. Well, I mean, I'm sure they're taking the Guild Summit. So now we got to draw into some... Wow, they take the Primeval Titan. That is a... Inter that must mean they have two discard spells. Opponent. Okay. Wait, they're just going to let us draw cards with the guild summit? That seems risky. I assume they're naming Mazes End here. Yep. Uh, Alright, well, Plaza gained some life. I mean, I guess we also saw that they're a uh, Invoke Despair deck, so maybe they're thinking, well, we're just going to invoke it anyway, eventually. And they have stuff that punishes it, like Bowmasters. Opponent passes. Let's just play a Simic Guild Gate. If they Bowmasters, I think we kill it. All right, there's the Bowmasters. We kill the Bowmasters. Draw a card. All right, there's the Crucius. All right, we could really use Ramp or Card Draw here. We need to start the Snowball. Opponent pitches a Fatal Push. Escape. Escape is very, very, very good. Baldur's Gate, draw a card. Escape to the Wilds, draw a few cards. Uh, Guild Gate, draw a card. All right, this worked out pretty well. And now we have an unthought seizable Gates of Blaze for next turn, which is kind of where we want it. And we have an answer to this. Uh, yeah, that's fine. The One Ring at this point's fine because we just draw more cards than the One Ring. Like once we have the Guild Summit going, Opponent, gonna thought these are souls here, sure. I mean, we'd still rather our opponent not have the one ring, but I guess the bigger concern is maybe Invoke Despair. Invoke Despair could be a problem. We definitely gotta sweep this turn. Opponent passes, so. So play a Guild Gate, draw a card. Explore. 
how much mana do we have? Do we have enough to do everything? Let's see. If we make blue mana, is it? Oh, it's five. That works, right? So make blue mana. Red. So gates ablaze. Sweep the board. Guild summit number two. Guild gate draw two cards. Well, this gives us a little protection from Invoke Despair. At least if we get invoked here, we're gonna have a Guild Summit left over. She old red. All right, that's actually kind of an issue. All right, we gotta find removal for this quickly or we're gonna die to our own Guild Summits. All right, Terra Sunder is removal for that quickly. So if we cast this, now there's no way to avoid the trigger. All right, one. So Terra Sunder, that's gotta go. Guildgate, draw two cards. Wow, that's a lot of gates. Make some green manas. Sarkudius root. Guildgate, Guildgate, draw four cards. And I guess we just do it again. I mean, we're gonna end up discarding a lot to hand size, but I think it's worth it. Draw four cards. Uh, discard five. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's get rid of Demir Gilgate. Five. I think we have enough gates, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven. All right. Well, I mean, can you kill us, opponent? Opponent basically has to kill us this turn, or else we get the Mazes End win next turn. And, uh, Mazes End doesn't really. Oh, actually, no, I guess that's not quite true, is it? So the problem is we got to get rid of this Pithy Needle. So we need to find, we need to find the other Terra Sunder. So we got to draw a bunch of cards to find Terra Sunder, and then we win next turn. Growth Spiral. The good news is we should have the ability to do this, too. Actually, let's just play the first, let's play a gate first. Play Azorius Guild Gate. Actually, no, we want to be able to play a Mazes End. Well, we have the Growth Spirals for Mazes End. Uh, all right, let's play Azorius Guild Gate. Draw a couple cards. If they flash in Bowmasters, we have the Flame Blessed Boat to kill it. All right, so there's a Bowmasters. We will kill the Bowmasters. Get pigged. There's a bunch of Flame Blessed Bolts. I mean, that's not bad. So let's make green mana. Primeval Titan. Guildgate Plaza. Draw two. Grow Spiral. Put a gate into play. Uh, we don't have any gates left, do we? Escape to the wilds. Gates ablaze. Sweep the board. So maybe we're not winning this turn. Play a maze's end. Explore. Put a land into play. Uh, discard a guild summit. Okay. Well, somewhere at the very bottom of our deck resides an answer to this pithing needle. A opponent draws a million cards. I mean, we know we have one more answer in here. I guess, you know how we lose is our opponent finding a second pithing needle. If they find a second pithing needle, I think we're dead because I don't think we have enough answers for two pithing needles. Otherwise, I think we still win next turn because we can just escape for the rest of our deck. And we have all the mana in the, the literal world. Croxa, sure, sure, sure. And explore. So I think we have it. Not not pretty, but we have it. All right, grow spiral, draw a card. Put a second mazes on. We did sideboard properly, right? I'm not missing something here. We do have one more. Ah, there we go. Okay, so Terra Sunder. Get rid of the Pithing Needle. And now we can mazes end. And GG, GG. All right. Uh, let's bring in the last, now that we see they're also playing Pithy Needle, I kind of want the Farewell too. How much can we reasonably bring in is the question. Farewell's really good. We also need to be able to kill the little things. How many sweepers can we play? 
Yeah, maybe we go six explorers. Let's write like that. On to game three, we are on the draw. Can we take down the monster of the format and hit Mythic with 15 rare gates? That is the question. That is the question. One win away, one win. We are on the draw, unfortunately. I mean, the question is really, can we get our engine going? That's the, that's the question. I mean, we're going to keep this. No red mana is awkward, but once we get red mana, this hand uh, should be pretty good. Let's play Golgari Gilgate Go. Pass us. Well, we will play a Selesnia Gilgate. Hey, right, there's a Bowmasters. Untap land. Crucius. This isn't great just because, I mean, we have the answers in hand. We just don't have the right colors of mana to cast them. Pounder discards a Fable, gets a card. All right. Well, that is red mana for next turn. Do we live? Shield Red's probably the most annoying because that survives our Gates Ablaze here. This sounds ridiculous, but I'm almost wondering if there's an argument for Terra Sunder on the treasure. So if they treasure into Shield Red, we can't sweep Shield Red. Actually, no, that's fine. That's fine. We can't we can sweep Shield Red. All right. Yep, yep, yep. I wasn't thinking we can always Flame Bless Bolt it. We're going to have Double Red because of Plaza. So if they play Shield Red, Gates Ablaze plus Flame Bless Bolt should get rid of it. All right. The One Ring. Okay. Well, I mean, we're going to spend a... This actually works out pretty well. So we get to tear us under the one rank. Opponent only draws one card. Then we get to untap and sweep. Oh, Croxa. Untap and sweep. Play the pause gain some life. Wow, if they name Escape to the Wilds, we are super sad. That would be incredibly unfortunate here. So they can't name Maze's End. Primeval Titan makes sense. Guild Summit makes sense. Escape, sadly, also makes some sense. The part that sucks is we'll have five mana next turn. So that does put Escape into our opponent's mind that this would be the turn we could untap land Escape. Primeval Titan is the most iconic card though, right? I think our opponent thought they could name Maze's End. That's my guess, is they thought they could name Maze's End. Come on, please don't just accidentally type escape. We need these escapes. Our hand suddenly does nothing if we don't get to resolve these escapes. It's annoying to lose our Primeval Titans, but we get to escape to the wilds. Wow, or our opponent just times out. That also is acceptable. Play a plaza. So our opponent didn't even take our Primeval Titans? Demir Guildgate passed the turn. Yeah, they, they took so long thinking they ran out of time. All right, that's fine. I mean, we have a Souls here, so we get to kill this before it does anything. Uh, kill the Shieldred. Draw. Gates ablaze. Well, let's play the White Guild Gate. Killing the Shieldred does mean we don't get to escape this turn, which kind of is a bummer just because I could draw a Thought Seize. And that is our only card advantage at the moment. All right, Croxa. Well, we'll discard the Flame Bless Bolt. Pass it. Well, let's escape to the wilds. Play an island. Play a guild gate. Gates ablaze to get rid of Croxa. And now I think we're in pretty good shape. Opponent, Orcish Bowmasters. I mean, we got a farewell. The big problem next turn is going to be, what do we cast? We have a lot of powerful cards exiled. Which ones do we cast? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have nine mana. Hitting Baldur's Gate would be the best. I guess it partly depends on what our opponent does. Do we have to sweep? Ooh, all right. Invoke Despair, draw a bunch. Growth Spiral. Plus there's this Orcish Bowmasters that makes drawing cards more painful. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Yeah, we're not super close to winning with Primeval Titan. So if we escape, we have five mana left. Yeah, let's escape. Play Plaza. Gain some life. Play Guild Summit. Actually, Actually, I think we just Primeval Titan here. Primeval Titan, we go up to 12. We can get the Baldur's Gate. Mazes at two, three, four, five, six. All right, they kill the prime time. I mean, we still have a bunch of answers, so we get to get rid of the Bowmasters. We have card draw. We now have lots of mana. Crucius. All right, sure. 
Uh, opponent hits us to 10. Crucius discards. We should be okay, though. We draw Soul Seer, so. Flame Bless both the Bowmasters. Play Guild Summit. Draw three cards. Gates ablaze. From Evil Titan. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Manor Gate, Gate to the Sea Tower. Seven, eight. Draw a couple cards. Nine. Azurius Guild Gate. All right, so I think hopefully we're good. Our opponent needs to literally kill us here from 10. Yeah, just killing the prime time's not gonna do it though. One, I guess even if they have Pithing Needle, we have a Terrace under. Thought Seize Pithing Needle could do it. Otherwise, Mythic, here we come. There's a, th okay, there's a Thought Seize. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's nine. Taking down the Rakdos monster twice in a row? Well, they didn't even take the Terrace. Oh, we definitely got it then. Oh, easy, easy, easy. So opponent passes, Terrace under. The Shieldred. I don't think any of this matters, though, because I think... Am I missing something? Don't we just win right now? So get rid of the Shieldred. Draw for our turn. Oh, I mean, that That makes sure. Now there's not even a possibility of us miscounting. Uh, so make some green. Just to, just to make sure, let's just get all the gates possible. Oh, no. Wait, we're still in our draw step. All right, little, little too excited. A little too excited. All right, yes, main phase. Now we can do this. No misclicking, please. Make a bunch of green mana. Play the Secudius route. Get a gate. Get a gate. Draw a couple cards. Play a gate. Draw a card. Where's our maze's end? Maze's end? We gotta. We definitely have enough now. Maze's end. Get a gate. And that is. 15 rare gates taking down Rakdos twice in a row, twice in a row to make it up to Mythic. So, I mean, if you want to grind with a deck that's super fun and super cheap, I would recommend this deck. Like I would, I would recommend, actually let's, let's pull this up real quick. This is going to be our wrap up, <laughs> little, little live wrap up. I'm going to pull up the untapped, the untapped stats. Cause I think this deck is like legit, legit, really good. So. As I mentioned in the intro, as I mentioned in the intro, the power of this deck is the deck was already sweet and fun and like a a pretty sweet like second tier, pretty sweet like second or third tier deck. But Primeval Titan just it it, it it it's such a huge deal. It's such a ridiculously huge deal for this archetype. When the magic number is 10 lands on the battlefield, just being able to jump the curve from 6 to 8 and then the next turn from 8 to 10 it speeds up the Mises end kill by like th at least three turns. It's such a huge deal. Plus, it's a really, really big creature. Uh, so now that we've played this deck a bunch, what would I change? Would I change anything? So remember, the goal is 15 total rares and mythics. If you look at our sideboard, some of this stuff like Relic of Progenitus could be rest in peace or like uh, Soul Seer could be whatever, like upgraded removal rare spell of some kind. You could play more sweepers. I would play more sweepers in the sideboard uh, if I had more rares to work with. Honestly, though, for being 15 rares, the only thing I would consider changing is the Gatebreak Ram. Because there's so much Rakdos in the meta, I almost think it makes more sense to, like, put Gatebreak Ram into the sideboard and then instead play more removal in the main deck. And then Gatebreak Ram, when we run into, like, the Mono Red deck or the Gruul deck or whatever, some deck that isn't easily going to kill it, then we bring it in and then it's absurd. Otherwise... I would run this exactly the same. Anyway, let's look at our untapped stats with this deck because I think they're actually really good. So untapped, where are we at with uh, with Gates? So Gates, technically, so technically 13 and five overall, 72% win rate through Diamond up to Mythic, but I think it's actually better than this if you look at the versions because we initially played like a while ago. Yeah, a version that we played on stream and we did okay, but it didn't do like super well. Honestly, making it more budget friendly for the video, I think improved the deck since I made these changes, uh, which was get rid of Abriel Grazer, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> 
uh, downgrade the mana base to more basic lands and uh, switch around like the removal a little bit. Ended up going 11 in two through diamond, 11 in two, 85% win rate. And remember, this is like, this got us to mythic. It's not like we we're playing in gold or bronze or like some low level and just stomping people. We we're fighting through like high ranking decks, playing the best cards in the meta and Gates kind of just crushes them. Uh, I will say hilariously, uh, one of the things that I think improved the deck is playing the, playing the basic lands. The basic lands came in over like a creature land and a breeding pool, mostly to make the deck hit the 15 rare budget. That was a reason I did it, but it turns out a lot of people are playing like Field of Ruins. We ran into a couple of like actual dedicated land destruction decks playing like Cleansing Wildfire and having three basics to find actually really saved us. It let us, I, I played land destruction multiple times with this deck on our run up to Mythic and we actually just beat land destruction, which sounds ridiculous, I guess, in some ways that we're like a land based combo deck that uh, you would think land destruction would be the hoser to our deck. But in practice, it doesn't work out that way. And the three basics are a big reason why. So anyway, the deck's awesome. I've always loved playing Gates. It's always been one of my favorite budget decks. And now this historic build, because of Primeval Titan, I think is just legitimately good. I think we can go back to the stats. What did we actually lose to since we updated the deck? I'm I'm curious what our what our actual what our actual losses were. Oh, I guess uh, does it tell us what our matchups were for okay, so we went this was the original run. Where's our where's our updated run? Cause this includes all of our stats, right? I think. We lost to mono white and we lost to and we lost to black white apparently. Demir we went one and one Rakdos. Those two Rakdos losses though were on stream. So we went three and oh off stream once we updated the deck against Rakdos. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think the deck's actually just like legit. So if you're looking for a way to uh, rank up to Mythic, without spending a lot of wild cards, or you just love Primeval Titan, or you like drawing a lot of cards, or you like ramping a lot. I think the deck's actually just like a really legit option. As weird as it sounds, I think that Gates is actually like super well positioned in the meta. It beats Rakdos in general, at least it beats Rakdos enough that I think we have a positive record, depending on how you count those first matches before we updated the deck. Like even worst case, we had a positive record. Best case, we kind of crushed Rakdos. And as you saw in some of our matches, we just don't care about the one ring. Everyone's trying to do one ring things and we just don't care because because of Escape and Guild Summit, we actually just outdraw them. We generally more card advantage than the one ring does. So normally you see the one ring come down and you're like, oh no, there's no way I can win this game. Like our opponent's just gonna draw so many cards, the game's over. But because of <laughs> because of Guild Summit, our uncommon 20 cent one ring, we actually just honestly most of the time don't care. We saw that in one of the Rakdos matchups that we just saw where our opponent uh, like had the one ring. I think it got up to five counters. They drew almost their entire deck with it. And we still just won that game in the end. They could literally draw their entire deck, playing the best deck in the format. And it didn't matter. In the end, Maze's end, Primeval Titan, Escape, like, comes through and gets the win. So anyway, that's Primeval Gates for Historic. For my money, I think it's got to be the best budget deck in Historic right now. And maybe just one of the best decks in Historic, as weird as that sounds. That's been our budget magic for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.